This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. You lot, got that? It's a lot of qualifiers. It's a lot of good qualifiers. It's a lot Very of Very good qualifiers. Yes, they they are a hand roasted micro batch coffee, fresh roasted after you order. Not not some garbage coffee that you would find on the shelves at a supermarket. This is fresh roasted after you order. Located in Perrysburg, Ohio. So it, you know it's good if it's still in Ohio here. Fair trade, certified, and USDA organic. You can find all the great products from medium light to medium to dark roast all at ironbeancoffee.com. That is ironbeancoffee.com. Stick around and I will talk to you more about the different flavors that the Iron Bean Coffee Company has to offer. Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is also an Ohio-based company. Uh, They are based, however, uh, just outside of Findlay, Ohio, uh, more specifically Cary, Ohio. Um, He is awesome. He's been a partner on the show for a very long time, our good friend, the Mad Canadian. Uh, He has a food truck, and now that the weather is improving, he's out with his food truck again. Uh, Make sure to check up on his social media pages to find out exactly where that food truck will be next. But if you want to do some of your own Mad Canadian stuff at home, you can check out his website, uh, which is themadcanadianbbq.com. There you can buy many of his great spices. Um, If you're doing, a let's say, a steak or maybe some burgers, let's talk a little bit of beef. Um, You could use the coffee in Q. There's actual real life coffee in that, not coffee flavoring. In fact, it's the cast iron from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. So you know it's real coffee. Uh, You could also put uh, some S&P butt on there. You can put S&P butt on anything. Uh, Same thing with the Sonoran Heat. You can put the Sonoran Heat on anything. Uh, But I would recommend the Kerry Steak. I think that's my favorite of his to put on a hamburger. Uh, A a steak as well, obviously. It's right there in the name. but, uh, but, But don't let that coffee and Q sneak by it. It's great on beef as well. Also, the Old Fashioned. It's bourbon, it's cherry, a little bit of bitter, a little bit of sweet. It's fantastic on, uh, I would say, beef or pork. In fact, I've put it on chicken. It's great on chicken, too. It's 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 bourbon. How can you go wrong with bourbon and cherry? You can't. It, there's no way. So you can find all of these spices and a bunch more over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That's the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. What's up, Discord? What is up, YouTube? What a weekend this was, right? <sighs> Man, we're we're going to talk about the basketball game. We're going to talk about the basketball game at the top of the show, but we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. Just just because it's it's time to move on to football. <laughs> um, just because that's that's all. Just because just cause. Sister Jean, all happy right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's save it. Save it for the save it for the actual <laughs> show. Save it for the actual show, right, which uh, we get should get, which we should start. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Um, mixed. <laughs> I'll go with mixed, Jared. I'll go with mixed, mixed after I, what I've seen this weekend. Mixed, I think, is. Completely apt because I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in Ohio. Um, I, I don't know what the weather has been doing. Yes, that's right. Weather talk. You're welcome. Yes, let's, let's, let's talk about a little weather here. It Cause it actually plays in. It's actually relevant. Cause we're talking about our mixed feelings right now. Mm-hmm. I'm in Ohio and the weather has officially turned. I, we had a little bit of a false spring a couple of weeks ago. I think, I think our, I think our weather has officially turned. So the weather's nice, so that helps. Football has started, so that helps. Got some spring camp at work. We're, t- we're talking spring football this episode. That helps. That always, that always, you know, you get to that like X football slump, and then you get some spring football, and then then we go into the the uh, the complete 
wasteland without football, but we're, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're, we're focused on the spring and we're focused on things coming back to life and it's football coming back to life. That's what we're exactly. doing with football. Exactly. In, um, in here, but in then here there's in, Carolina, in here in North Carolina, it's been getting pretty warm. The cherry blossoms are, are blooming right now here. So you got some nice white and pink trees here and before too long here. I'm enjoying it while it lasts before the, the green and yellow pollen takes over and you don't want to open your windows at all. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not pollen season in the South is nasty. Uh, The, but then there's the bad side, which I think leads us into our first segment of the show. Yes. We're still talking about basketball. Uh, uh, We are going to maybe spend the first quarter or so of the show on basketball. And then, then we're going to move on to some football and then we're going to move on to some ask Sloopcast questions. So, so, the bad news, Ohio yeah. State losing in the first round yeah. or second round, depending on how you look at it, uh, to Oral Roberts University, 72 to 75. And I, w- I would look at this as a typical Ohio State let up where let they down. just were just piss poor beyond the arc and more so behind the free throw line. Ninth. Yeah. I think that's this right here. The free throw line is the biggest takeaway right here. Nine for 18, 50% there. You, that is unacceptable. That is unacceptable that, from this caliber of a team here who, who's expected to do great things. And yeah. you only shoot 50% from the free throw. Yeah. The three point line. I'm not, I'm not going to be as critical. 21% is still not great, but live by the three, die by the three. We, we said it all yeah, along, but still, a, 50, but still 50%. You miss half of your free throws and you lose by three. Me. They're free. That's it right there. They're That's free. it right there. They're free. It's right there in the name. They're free. They're the, they, they call it the charity line. Yeah. And, and in a game in which you go to overtime. Yeah. In a game in which you go to overtime in a game in which you only lose by three in overtime and you shot 50% behind the charity stripe. And what's worse, Jerry? We can talk about this- a lot of things that went wrong in this game. We can talk about not having Kyle Young. We can talk about how that little point guard from Oral Roberts was seemingly unstoppable. We can talk about the three-point line. I may have already... No, I didn't. Uh, we can talk over. about... The turnovers. The turnovers. Oh, we can talk about the turnovers. There's a lot of things that went wrong in this game. And when you're the number two seed and you lose to a 15 seed, and I don't know what the Vegas line was, but I think it was in the double digits. The A lot of things have to go wrong. And a lot of things went wrong for Ohio State. And, and but I, in I a be game quick. in which you go to overtime, you only shot 50%. From the charity, it's right, it's free, it's charity, it's right there in the name. You only shoot 50%. And and I, I want to be clear, I want to make sure everybody, everybody who's listening to us right here understands this. This was a team failure, not a, an individual, not one person. This was a team loss. It was everybody who was involved in this game. The collective collectively lost this game. It wasn't one person in particular, everybody. Can okay, so I think Kyle's dancing around it. Let's talk about it. Uh EJ Liddell received some uh I, I mean they threats. you could call them death threats. I don't know if you would seriously I don't know how seriously you'd actually take the threat of death, but he received death threats. Um it, it, it got national news. It's it's gotten really big. Well, it, it's not it's not just not just in Columbus and Ohio. It, it it's national news of of what was said to EJ Liddell and, well, and my question: Do we know like what why EJ? I mean, did did Washington or suing or? Did, did anyone else receive anything like this? It hasn't made the news if it has. Oh, I mean, you, let, let's look at let, let's look at EJ's stats, Jared. Let's he look did, at this. He played. He played. The, want to talk he about? Play, he, he played. He played the second most minutes. Second behind, most minutes behind uh, Dwayne Washington, sixty-six percent from the field. Yeah, and 
had averaged for the team and free throws 50 percent uh, that, that, that wasn't great re- and he had 14 rebounds and led the team in in points for the game led the team in points led the team in rebounds led the team in assists led the team in assist led the team also in led the team point in shooting percentage why why is Liddell receive is just because he was the star is that it? Because he he's the he's the cover boy of the team. Is that why? Because he had the best game, and like Washington had a streaky game. I so Washington did a lot to keep Ohio State in this game, but he also yeah, saw he, he, he also he shot off. three for twelve behind the three point line. Yeah, he started off really strong. He scored like eleven points, something like in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. He scored eleven points, but they only scored like five maybe six points in that second half and he also had a no 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 i don't and i don't want to point fingers at dwayne washington but in defense of ej liddell it it it's again going back to what i said before this is a team loss it's not pointing at one person you can point the fingers at the coach i mean he's he's the coach he should he should be taking the he's the only one on the floor making serious money you want to blame blame holtman that's fine he's an adult who makes a lot of money throw throw your ire at him if you must but and again like I, i'm not blaming washington by any means but he missed nine three pointers he missed the last shot of the game that could have sent it to d- double overtime and he's also probably the only reason that ohio state earned a number 2 seed so I don't all right. Let, let's talk seriously. Let's talk very seriously for a moment. I want to talk very seriously about anyone who harasses a student athlete. I mean, anyone who ra- harasses anyone online. I mean, anyone who harasses anyone online. But we're uh we're an Ohio State podcast, and the EJ Liddell thing is what's in the news, and they're unpaid athletes. And so let's, 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 let's stay. If you're, if you're harassing an unpaid athlete online and what, 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 what went wrong in your life? What is wrong with you? And I I think if, if I can, if I can play armchair psychologist for a second, I think that you have nothing going on in your life. Nothing. You have nothing going on in your life. Mm -hmm. The fact that you are this upset over a sports result. And by the way, Kyle and I love Ohio State sports. I mean, here we are doing this podcast. We did this podcast out of our pocket. We lost money on this podcast for three to four years. Lost money on it. Not a lot. Don't, don't, Don't feel bad for me. Lost money on this podcast for three to four years. You know, then we kind of broke even for like the fourth year, I think. And then like now we make money on the podcast. But given the hours that we put into this podcast, if you took the hours in a week that we put into this podcast and divide it by the amount of money we make. Minimum wage would look fantastic because it's not even close. So we're doing this out of love. Let, let, let there be no mistake about that. And I think that these people who act, whether they're smashing a television or harassing people online or F-bombing Twitter, I think they think that their pain proves that they're a bigger fan. I think that they think they're lashing out, that the level in which they are upset proves how big of a fan they are. And it doesn't. And some of them weren't even Buckeye fans, too. It just, they're just radic, just... People who had Ohio State going deep in the tournament. Giving him crap just to give him crap. And also, like, people just upset maybe about their brackets. Because that's I mean, thing. kind of going into that, too. Zero, Jared. There are zero in, like, all the major online brackets right now. That's like Yahoo, CBS, ESPN, yeah. all those major ones. Zero, as we're speaking here, is Sunday afternoon after Illinois, especially after Illinois losing right now. Zero perfect brackets. I want I want to put a button on the EJ Liddell thing. Okay. If you are watching this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast, and if you threaten 
or plan on threatening a student athlete over the result of a athletic contest, turn us off. Unsubscribe. Go away. Never come the fuck back. Mm. Go. We don't want you. I'm a big believer in calling your audience. I'm a big believer in crafting your audience. It's why I sometimes say the things I do. I want some of you to go away because I don't want to deal with people who I don't want to deal with. Why? Because I don't make enough money. That's why. <laughs> if I made more money, maybe I'd deal with some people. I don't. So if you're the type of person who would harass a student athlete online over the result of a sporting contest, please go the fuck away. We don't want you. Go away. There. That, that's, and that, that's, that's all I'll say about that. I'll, I'll, I'm willing to call the audience of assholes. And okay. if you do this, you're an asshole. Please go away. We don't want you. All right, kind of going back to the, the game here, Jared. This is a typical what we saw in the end of February where Ohio State had that skid of losing to really good opponents <laughs> where they just had a hard time just shooting the three turnovers, not as good free-throwing attempts here. That's exactly what we saw here wrapped up into one game of the yeah, their first game. Those in the, um, good in the, quality yeah. opponents, and this was Oral Roberts, a team famously bad at defense. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It's it's crazy. I mean, you look at this here. They had two. They had two players who scored fifty nine of their seventy five points. So the only they they had one, two, three, four other players who had the rest of the points. You knew who was going to score the points. Yeah, you knew who was going to, and they just did not defend well. Yeah. Um, at at this time last year. I asked the question, and I only asked the question. I wasn't saying that we should. I only asked the question. I asked the question, when does the honeymoon end for Holtman? And this year, we said, you know what? We're good now. Uh, you know, when, when was the time for Ohio State? When was the time for Holtman at Ohio State? When was it going to happen? When was it going to happen? And I think this year we put that to rest because we saw what this team was capable of. Well, we now we know what this team was capable of and give credit to Holtman. He built this team. But this is a first round exit in the tournament. And I don't know if he gets some grace for making a deep run in the Big Ten tournament. I don't know if he gets some grace for another 20 win season. And I am not saying that Holtman should be fired. I'm not saying that I don't believe that. But I don't know that he increased his tenure this year. I don't know if he, at the end of this year, deserves some big extension and a bonus, which, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I think Holtman's really just bought himself another year at Ohio State when he could have bought himself. I mean, Ohio State basketball does not have the same expectations as Ohio State football. You could buy yourself a lifetime subscription to being the Ohio State head basketball coach mm -hmm. with a Final Four appearance. Yep. Well, maybe in the first round, Jer in the first round, we had 32 games and <laughs> a lot of upsets. <laughs> a lot of upsets here. We've had, um, obviously, we had the Ohio State loss here. Um, looking down the line, Purdue lost. We had Tennessee losing, Texas losing, San Diego State loses to Syracuse. You could argue if that was an upset or not, but it was still a six seed losing to an 11 seed. Rutgers beating Clemson, Maryland beating UConn, UCLA beating BYU. This was a year where we saw a lot of upsets. Yeah. What, what the hell happened to the Big Ten? Ohio, the Bobcats beating Virginia. So are we now a Bobcats fan? I, I know our boy Brawley is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just done with basketball now. I'll, I'll see you when the NBA playoffs start. And until then, I'm I'm just done with basketball for now. We got well, WrestleMania in a few in a few weeks. I, that's all I need to get me through for right now. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that kind of leads us into our next section then, Jared. Spring football starts. Yes. As as Ohio, as Ohio State basketball leaves early, leaves Indianapolis early, the spring camp starts for the football team. Yeah. Um, but the first news coming out yeah. of the football team isn't all that great. As as we for, as we learned um, on Friday, I think it was Friday. Uh, Marcus Hooker charged with OVI, and for those of you and is, not and is, from the, and is suspended from the team. Yeah, and for those of you not from Ohio, uh, an OVI is a DUI, but we just call all of our things different here because Ohio. Uh, so yeah, he. Uh, Ryan Day in his press conference, I'm not going to read the quote exactly, um, essentially said something along the lines of he suspended indefinitely. We're going to let the legal process p- play out, uh, so on and so forth. So he's not with the team right now. Um, I think he had ground to make up to get back into the starting rotation at playing safety at Ohio State. Um, and this, I mean, missing spring camp, even if it was for a quote unquote, good reason. I don't know how good of a, you know, but for a le- more mm-hmm. legitimate, you know, an ankle sprain or something that that doesn't help. You're you're not on the field getting better. Well, he's not on the field getting better right now because he's stupid. Or maybe he has a problem. This is his second OVI after coming to Columbus. Number two. First one was a freshman. It was a while ago, but this is number two. Yeah. And especially coming to the time when it's a very young and inexperienced secondary where he could see a lot of time and you come in to right before spring camp here and you get charged with OVI. As we like to say, when Urban Meyer was around, like you're in the, you're in Urban's doghouse here. Yeah. I'm is sure. that going to be the same? Is that going to be the same here with uh, Ryan day? Will will Marcus Hooker be, this is in um, Ryan Day's doghouse, and for how long? This is pure or, speculation. Well, he should... back. This is pure speculation on my part. One hundred percent speculation. I wouldn't be surprised if we never see Marcus Hooker play for Ohio State again. Um, uh, he, I think he's getting passed over by the younger guys on the roster. I think mm-hmm. he's officially lost out on the safety position at this point. Like I. I, I don't see him getting back on the field in a starting role. Yep. Uh, I don't see him getting back in the good graces of the coaching staff relatively easily. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's time for a fresh start. I think might be a thought process going through his head. And I mean, I mean, we I hope just like if, with anybody that gets a clean start yeah. and turns a new leaf, kind of like what we saw. With um, a bunch of people, the bunch of people, but more recently, uh, McLaurin. Where well, McL- M- yeah, I, McLaurin was always talented. I think he was being hampered by the people around him, and I say that as someone who was a huge critic of McLaurin. Mm-hmm. I, I so let me acknowledge that uh, yeah. Booker. I think doesn't. Oh, this is mean. I'm sorry. I don't think he gets on Ohio State to begin with if his brother hadn't done what he did at Ohio State. And he, in his time on the field last year, at times looked really good and at times looked like he didn't belong out there. Yeah. I mean, at, at that point, I don't, I just, I take every, you got to take every opportunity that comes your way. And when you have stuff like this, that's just, you're just taking too many steps back to, get to the point where you would like to be. Yeah. I, 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 one, if there's some sort of alcohol, alcoholism here, if this is like a, a, first and foremost, I want him to get better before he ruins his life, even outside of football. So number one, if that's the case, and I have no idea, he has two OVIs in what, four years. I'm not saying he's an alcoholic. I don't know him. I'm not saying he is, but if he is, I want him to get better. That's first and foremost. Second, I want him to finish his year, his college career on the field. I want that for him. 
I just don't think that happens at Ohio State. And, you know, maybe it can happen elsewhere. I, I don't know. Um, we don't normally like to talk about transfers, but this is a, a unique case that I think sort of warranted it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, so, yeah, that's, let's that's move, it. Let's, yeah, let's let's move on here. Let's 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 tackle the big questions going into spring camp here, Jared. Yeah. And yeah. that is the following questions. Who will be the quarterback? Who are going to be the defensive backs? The linebackers? Who will Ohio State's next impact pass rusher be? Who is Teague the next the next running back at Ohio State at Ohio State? And we and will the defensive game plan change along with coaching and player changes? Also the offensive line. How will the offensive line shake out? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So we're gonna take, we're gonna take these one at a time. Where, right. where would you like to start? Uh, I would let, let's let's start with the quarterback real quick here. Let's start with the quarterback. Um, we got we got some very talented, um, incredibly talented, very very talented quarterbacks. Um, minus Justin Field coming into next year. Yeah, arguably it, or maybe inarguably. These guys are being tasked with replacing the best quarterback to ever play at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. I I think that's a an easy argument to make that we're not going to get into right now, but that's a huge task. And I want to set expectations for everybody. Everyone listening, the entire Ohio State fan base, if yeah. <laughs> we need to trickle this out. All three of yeah, these quarterbacks yeah. are very good. None of them are going to be as good as Justin Fields this year. But I want to, I want to say that again. None of them will be as good as Justin Fields this year. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, the, the, the cast that's going to be around yes. whoever's going to be starting is going to help them tremendously. Yeah. I mean, Miller, Stroud, and McCord, whoever's going to be the starter, will have an excellent crew around him to make them look better. The, the wide receivers are, are insane. The yeah. depth that Ohio State has at wide receiver right now is insane. Jeremy Ruckert coming back for his senior year. That's a huge security blanket for a first time starting quarterback. I think Ohio State is still looking to potentially bring in a second tight end, maybe through the transfer portal. Um, you have a bunch of great running backs and that's, mm -hmm. that's the next topic of conversation. We don't, we're not, we'll yeah. get into that later, yeah. but the court, the quarterbacks here though, is this, is this going to be a concern? You got, you got three underclassmen, you got no seniors, no juniors quarterbacks here. You're losing two last year. You have Hoke and fields gone. Is this going to be a concern with the say only, only having three quarterbacks on this roster? Uh, no. Okay. Well, for, for, they have three great quarterbacks on the roster. When was the last time that happened? Oh, wait. Three great quarterbacks on the same roster. About four years ago? About four? But, but what's what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the, the four or five years ago when you had Braxton and JT and Cardale yeah. on, on and, well, um, and uh, wow, I'm totally forgetting his plane. Burrow. Dwayne. Yeah. And Dwayne Haskins. Um, <laughs> Looking back at that, that is. Were they all on the field or not on the field? Were they all is, on the same roster at one point? That is crazy to think of. That is crazy to think but, of. But anyway, point is, is that they have three incredibly talented. Who are all going to receive a lot of practice this spring. Quarterbacks mm -hmm. on scholarship on the roster, which is not a thing they've it, had in a long time. Yeah, and I think and I think that's very key. And I think a couple of them um, we'll get into here shortly with some of the uh, press availability availability from co some of the coaches is that practice. Last year we didn't have a spring practice, didn't have much of summer camps at all. Too, we have a very young quarterback um, roster here and defensive backs as well. Having a spring practice here, getting fifteen practices this spring, is very very crucial. For this team, Brian Day says uh, he was asked how the quarterback competition will sort of break down. And he said 
this is not an exact quote, I'm pulling this from Tony's notes. Um, Tony Gerdeman, that is, sorry. Uh, he says, uh, they will try to make equal reps as best they can. So for anyone thinking that McCord might not get his fair share of reps as the true freshman among the redshirt freshmen, Ryan Day is at least publicly stating otherwise. But as we all know, the doctor lies. Um, he says they've done it before. There'll be lots of reps to go around. It's a very large roster right now. They currently have 112 players, including walk-ons. Uh, there will be times in which they will have three groups practicing. Uh, three or five deep at some positions. Quote, we're expecting to get a lot of reps. Spring will lead up to fall camp. It's all continuation. Quarterback needs to spend some time in the offense learning. So the question I have for you, Kyle, do you think, and I'm not saying a quarterback will be named the starter, but do you think that by the end of spring, even if, again, we're not making it official and no one's being named the starter, you think maybe Ryan Day is going to have a really good one, two, three in his head? We hope so. Do we? I, I hope so. As, a, as an Ohio State fan, I hope so. Because if that's the case, it tells me that no one has separated themselves from, from the pack. And that's that's just not a good thing going into fall camp because then you're spending fall camp also figuring out who's going to be the starter and you're splitting first team reps among different quarterbacks and you're still trying to figure out who's the quarterback. I mean, look at what happened after the national championship game when you had Cardio Jones and then you had JT Barrett coming back from his injury and trying to figure out, oh, who's the number one quarterback? We didn't know. And it was right. a whole debacle for that year of trying to figure out who was the best quarterback. And then we, we come to find out like, oh, JT's starting. And then he played terrible. Oh, Cardell is playing. And then he played terrible. It was just, they were just, they were just too much. There was just too much back and forth going on. So I hope before the end of spring that we do, that Ryan Day, in his mind at least, has a one, two, and three. Uh, Michigan Bucknut in our Discord live chat says he, he says it will be. I, I don't know if you I don't, I don't know if you have a crystal ball down there, Michigan Bucknut. Or actually, I guess that's you say up there. Um, he says it will be narrowed down to two by the end of spring. Okay. It needs to be. Now he says it needs to be. And I, I think that's true. I think you would at the very least, because you don't want to keep splitting your starting reps by a third. You would maybe hope to at least have it down to a half and half or, you know, a 40-40. 10, 20, 40, 40, 20. Uh, yeah, so that's. I, I think it will be a very loose one, two, three. I think that's his job. I think that's that's he. Well, you know, and, and the quarterback, coach, obviously, that's their job. Uh, but maybe to keep, you know, I think the competition helps. There's the two thoughts here. Keeping the competition alive to make sure everyone's getting the most out of themselves as they can, but also getting a first time starter ready, getting him as many practice reps as possible. And build continuity with the starting lineup and all of that. So two schools of thought there, and you're going to have to try and figure out a little bit of both, I think. All right, Kyle, um, our next question will be. Uh, who will, uh, yeah, who will the defensive backs be? And can Ohio State return to being the best in America? But before we do that question, Kyle, it's time to do some ad reads. Yes, sir. Let's, let's, let's first hear from our good friend over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I mentioned to you at the start of the show here why you should choose Iron Bean Coffee Company as your premium coffee company. Now I'll tell you some of the different... Uh, coffees that they have to offer. Let's let's go today. Let's talk about the dark and the extra dark roast that Iron Bean Coffee Company has. We'll start with the Fierce, a highly caffeinated dark roast. It's one of their highest rated and most rated uh, dark roasts on their website. website. The Odin, which 
I hear a lot from Jared <laughs> when he does the ad reads. The Odin, another great uh, dark roast. The drink from your skull of your enemy and the integrity. All of those are dark roast. Or if you want to go even deeper into that void, you can go into the fear no evil, a black roast coffee. It's a, they say here, it's their highest quality, most floral and carefully roasted to the brink of flames. It smells is smoky, exotic, and rich, and taste is bold. Be sure to check out those and all the other great um, flavors and other coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, uh, we are talking... Um, a bit about some of the fantastic things you could put on your beef. Let's talk chicken. You want to talk chicken this time, Kyle? Well, first and foremost, uh, Kyle has dubbed. Uh, we have the we have TMCs, uh, the Mad Canadian. We call them TMC for short. It's you know it's a thing we do. Um, he has these gift boxes, these these value packs. I don't know exactly what term we use for them, um, but. He has a couple of them, and one of them is called the Sweet Heat, Sweet Heat, which Kyle has dubbed the Wing Box. So if you're into chicken wings, this this might be the box for you. Uh, it has a bottle of the Four Horsemen, a bottle of the Discord, a bottle of the Two Border, and a bottle of the Old Fashioned. So I told you that Old Fashioned was good on chicken too, didn't I? I told you. That's your wing box right there. The Four Horsemen and the Discord are both incredibly spicy. His spiciest, these two are. Incredibly spicy four pepper blends. Uh, the, the difference between them being that the Four Horsemen has a saltier base and the Discord has a little bit of a sweeter base. It's a maple. Uh, and so that's the, that's the difference between those two. But they, other than that, are uh, almost the same. And then, of course... There's also the two border. Now, the two border, excellent on chicken. I've done it. It's great. Uh, it's maple and it's red pepper flake, which, yes, great on chicken. Absolutely wonderful. I like it on my eggs. That's what I do with it. That's that's like my go to egg seasoner. You get a little bit of that maple, that little bit of that morning maple. We all like a little bit of maple in the morning, whether it be syrup or maple sausage or whatever it is. So yeah, I was just going to put a little bit of that maple on the eggs. And then of course we need a little bit of spice on there. We need a little bit of spice. So that's where that red pepper flake comes in. Uh, so I, I think you can check out that box. There's also the just send it, which has a, uh, I almost said trio, a quattro, a quattro of um, his most versatile spices in the just send it box. And then there's the whole hog which is a one of each of all of his seasonings. And you can find all of that and more at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That's the mad Canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered. All right. So we have, uh, uh, what, what did I tease? Oh yeah. The BIA or as I like to call them, the DBU available That's too much last year. <laughs> not, not so much last year. Available at merch.thesloopcast.com. Um, yeah, can Ohio State return to DBU? Can they return to BIA, the best in America? And who, who will those players be? Who will the safeties be? <laughs> in short, no, Austin says. Oh, ye of little faith. Again, it go, kind of goes back to like last year where we worried, not, not just for Ohio State, but I think in general for all college teams, is the practice. Teams didn't get to practice in the spring, uh, delaying practice, limited practice during the fall, delay in playing games, limited game experience too, really hindered teams with younger, inexperienced players. And Ohio State was no different in the defensive backs last year. I mean, Ohio State only lost one defensive back going, coming into this year, and that's Wade. Everybody else returns, and you could look at that negatively, you could look at that positively, but we're here to tell you why 
Jared and I are going to tell you why we think that's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's more experience with all of our younger players. Banks, I think, is going to be the the name that most people are going to know or get to know better compared to last year. And some of the younger players that we're going to see, too. Uh, I think Cavos is one that I think a lot of people are really talking to. I'm going to see some more experience from Brown, Johnson, Martinez. Um, so, yeah, we're going to really see how well uh, these defensive backs are going to play this year. Yeah, the you know, with with Cam Brown, uh, that's a guy who could have helped out Ohio State a lot last year, but blue is Achilles and it's it's football and that happens. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you do hope that he can come back and be productive this year. You, you know, if you're going to blow your Achilles, I guess do it in the first or second game of the year, which is what happened. But also it was 2020 and the first or second game of the year happened in October. So I, I, I don't necessarily know to what quality we'll see Cam Brown this year um, and how much practice time he will get. Uh, and Achilles is especially tough for a corner with all the backpedaling they have to do with all of the breaking out of a back pedal and it, it, it's all killer on the Achilles. So that's going to be tough for him. So I mm -hmm. want to set expectations for Cam Brown. That that's, that's going to be tough for him. Uh, the safeties I think are just as important to look at. I think we, we focus on corners a lot. I think we're going to have Josh Proctor, who I think played well last year in a secondary that didn't play well. I thought he improved a ton from week one to week, whatever mm -hmm. I, I thought. And, and I think that we can see that again this year. I also think we're going to get ransom playing a lot of safety this year. Yep. And that's what, and that's what um, coach Combs said. He said that ransom will be playing the cover safety spot in the slot this year. And will also move around and play other areas as well. And the, Main thing that Combs is really going to be pushing this year, which he did last year, and, it, and you saw Hurt Haas State a number of times, especially in the Alabama game there. Um, he says here, we'll need to be able to play to press man to man. And we need to be able to play it over and over again. That's what he called, that's their fastball. That's the defense's fastball. That's their, should be their bread and butter, what they should be able to go to pretty much every play and be able to cover most of the uh, plays for most of the season. And if they can't do that, that's going to be an issue moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, how, how much, how much cover three, how much split safety will there be? It all depends on how well spring camp comes th in the following weeks. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, and, and I think, uh, somewhere in his press availability this week, Combs said um, someone asked him if they could tell him, tell the the press on. I'm trying to find it, but basically he's like, hey, can you tell us what's going to change with the defense this year? And he just said, no. And like, no, he, no, of course not. Don't don't tip your hat to what you're going to be doing with your defense. To the opponents, don't do that publicly. Of course, don't don't say it. Um, the the issue I have, or yeah, the, the issue I have um, with people who have issues with combs. So going a couple layers deep there. The issue I have is that a lot of people keep blaming him for this single high safety look, but that's being dictated from Ryan Day. If you don't like that single high safety, if you don't like that Seattle Seahawk-esque defense that Ohio State's been running for the past couple years, you need to put that on Ryan Day, not Coach Combs. And you saw that the first year with Coach Day, too. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the names right now, but you saw a lot, too. They played man-to-man -man on Combs' first year, or not Combs, I'm sorry, uh, Ryan Day's first year. And any time that you saw the wide receiver go in motion, you see the safety just, they split there. Where one is initially playing yeah. the, the deep safety, wide receiver goes in motion, 
the other the other uh, safety goes back, and then the other safety follows him in man to man. Just didn't just didn't work last year. You could blame that a lot on practice. You could blame that mm-hmm. in experience, but we're going to really find out a lot this spring when they get these fifteen plus practices to really try to get this all hammered out. Uh, Nomad says that Combs and Day need to get on the same page. Depends upon how much Day trust him. And if they can't trust him, it's time to get a new coordinator. Head coach can't get head coach can't get do everything. I you know, you don't get to edit that. That that's just the on the record now, Nomad. <laughs> if I don't get to edit things I say stupid on the po- podcast, neither neither do you. Uh the the problem with that is vodka tonics. The, the the problem with that is one, it was hard for them to get on. Va- <laughs> he says he's on vacation. It's hard for them to get on the same page last season, lack of practice time, so on and so forth. It was they had we, we talked about this a lot in our postmortems of the season. Ohio State lost seven defensive backs last year. You lost seven defensive backs off of the roster from 2000 or excuse me, from yeah, from 2019 to 2020. As Kyle pointed out, you're only losing one this year. That's going to help a ton. Mm -hmm. You're going to get an actual full season of practice this year. That's going to help a ton. I, I don't. And if you so those are the things people are using to bash coach Combs. And to me, and that, and they don't like the defensive scheme. Well, guess what? That's coming from Ryan Day. If you didn't mm-hmm. like, and by the way, he wasn't the only defensive coordinator. Greg Madison, who's now gone, was also a defensive coordinator last year. But for whatever reason, and people decided to throw all of their ire at Coach Combs for things that I believe were completely outside of his control. And, you know. Call me a Coach Combs defender or apologist if you must, but that's that's the hill I'm going to die on. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll give we'll give Combs that first um, first year as a second honeymoon. <laughs> I, it's just it was I think an impossible task. And by the way, they went to the national title game. Lost only how many games <laughs> did they lose last year? One. Okay. So what a terrible year Ohio State had last year. <laughs> Going to the national title game. Fire everybody. Yeah. All right, Jared. My biggest worry, I mean, defensive backs is definitely a worry compared to like what we saw last year, especially in that national championship game. It was definitely wanted a better um, outcome from our defensive backs from that game. But my biggest worry going into this year it's our linebackers. You're losing four linebackers from last year, all with enormous amounts of experience. Yeah. Now, I know there's going to be people that's going to be complaining about like, oh, well, we're we're losing we're losing linebackers that weren't all that great, and we're losing Borland, which is going to be great for Ohio State. Blah 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 blah. It's experience yeah. that we're yeah. losing. It, it's, I mean. It's- you cannot like those. By the way, if you don't, Borland, different conversation for a different time. I, I get that there we have controversy there. Pete Warner, if you were still hating on Pete Warner by the end of twenty twenty, amazing year. He had an amazing year last year. Then you just weren't paying attention. Now, if you didn't like him as a sophomore, if you didn't like him at the beginning of his junior year, okay. But like me with Terry McLaurin, when I had to admit that, guess what? I was wrong come around on Pete Warner, you guys. And by the way, and it's not just that you're losing these individuals. It's that you're losing all of them at the same time. You have a completely fresh roster of linebackers. There's not someone on the field who the young guys can sort of look to and say, Hey, what's going on right now? I mean, you you can complain maybe a little bit about Browning, a five-star linebacker coming in, maybe not living up to the hype that we were hoping to see Browning, but we still got some really good linebackers coming in. I mean, Gant has a lot of potential. Tons of talent. But it's Eichenberg, just... Yeah, Eichenberg is one that we've talked about a number of times over the past couple of years, too. Absolutely. I think that's going to be a name that we can hear as well. Uh, yeah, I I, I, I agree, Austin. Um, Austin. I think Browning might be a better pro 
than than what he was in college. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, the linebackers will be interesting, and we have an entire spring to talk about it. And I want to deep dive the linebackers, but I don't think we have time to do it today. We're going to keep uh, Kyle next episode. Do a deep dive on all the positions in the spring camp. I think, I think is what we're yeah. going to have to do. Yeah, I agree. I, I want to get into we'll, all of this we, a we lot deeper than we have time for. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're, we are, we're going to go over a lot of like what the, the coaches said here. We talked about well, what we Ryan don't, Day we don't mentioned. To, Kyle, we're at minute 50 already. Um, I know. So let's, let's get through the rest of these big questions. Let's knock yeah. out some ask Sloopcast and let's get out of here. We're going to do a position by position breakdown. I think maybe next, next episode we're mm -hmm. and we'll get no, super no. deep into this. Um, no, we don't do baseball questions. Nomad. Throw them in the strike zone. Mm, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just <laughs> outside of our zone. Uh, all right. So next question, will Ohio state find their next impact pass rusher? Oof, this is a good one. This is a good one. And uh, Zach Harrison had a couple of uh, statements here that we wanted to point out here. But before, um, before you do that, I want to say that Zach Harrison was specifically called out by Ryan Day uh, as a guy who stuck out to him that improved over the offseason with, you know, just his body development. He looks different. Mm -hmm. He sticks out for sure. So Ryan Day, when asked, hey, who had a great offseason, he picked one name out of the hat. It was Zach Harrison. Mm -hmm. then, I mean, you're, li you're then, losing. Wait a minute. What, one more thing, Kyle. In, in regards to Zach Harrison, young guy. Got, it, they only made two players, two players available for press conference this week. One was mm -hmm. Thayer Munford, which just seems like the most obvious of choices. That's your <laughs> team leader right there. That's yep. guy's been on the team forever. He's an all American, I think. If not, he will be this year. That, that's the obvious choice. Second choice, Zach Harrison. That tells you something about what the coaching staff expects. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing to say his name during the press conference. It's another thing to actually look at your roster of 112 players and be like, hey, Zach Harrison, go take questions from the press. That, to me, the action, action's more important than words. The action of taking Zach Harrison and putting him in front of the press says mm -hmm. more to me than anything Ryan Day could have said about him. Yeah, and I think the defensive line here, I know it, we're going to sound like we're repeating ourselves from last year, but I think this is going to be deeper than what we had last year. Now, the, the biggest question here was what you just asked, Jared, is does this team have the next pass rusher? Do we have the next Chase Young, the next Bosa's here? Will it be Harrison? Could it be one of the more experienced folks? Could it be Smith? Could it be John Baptiste? You have two. I'm going to, I'm going to count JTT. I'm doing it. I'm counting JTT. Look at me. I'm counting it. I know he hasn't committed yet. I'm counting it. You have two <laughs> high impact, high potential guys who are at this already kind of being projected as first round draft picks in the NFL defensive ends coming into Ohio state this year. JTT is still in, in Washington. He never intended on graduating early. He's taking his time. He's, co I'm, he's coming to Ohio state. You can, you can put that down at like 95% and he's coming. All right. He, he's, he's on his way. Don't worry. And, but then you all already have on the team from five miles East of campus. Uh, maybe a little bit more. I, I don't know. Uh, from Pickerington. Central Ohio kid, Jack Sawyer. You want to talk about a guy who is the next Bosa. He even looks it. He kind of looks like a Bosa. But, you know, if we're talking about that next guy, that next Bosa, that next Chase Young. Zach Harrison belongs in that conversation. As does Jack Sawyer. And JTT, I think, is more of a big body guy then i think he's more of a um kyle help me out played for ohio state big big uh cam hayward i got there uh more maybe more of a cam hayward type than maybe a pass rushing bosa type but i i still think 
is, you know, a super high potential guy. And I, and I think what Harrison said here, I think is crucial because we didn't really see a lot of it last year. And what we were really hoping from all the hype that we saw in the defensive line that even us saying last year, saying this might be the best defensive line that we saw collectively yeah. in, in, Ohio, in recent Ohio State years. And he and says defensive here, tackles you played the defensive up line had have talked in about getting home and sacking the quarterback. They pressured a lot last year, but they need to find that extra half a yard. They need to get to that quarterback. That's been their main focus this spring. And that's absolutely right. How many times have we seen last year where it's like, Oh, Cooper almost got him. Oh, Harrison almost got him. Oh, Togi, I almost got him. It was that exactly what Harrison said, getting that extra half a yard to get to that quarterback, to get that strip sack sack to, hit that quarterback's arm as he's having it right over his ear there. That's so hearing that from Harrison, it makes me feel a lot better of seeing some really impact in this defensive end that we didn't see last year. Uh, Austin says, I assume talking about JTT, correct me if I'm wrong, Austin. Um, he said, funnily enough, he reminds me of a more talented Steve Miller. Uh, and I, I think there's something to that. Thing I remember about, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my memory is, is, yeah, he says yes. He was talking about JTT. In my memory, though, I, I just remember Steve Miller as being hyper tall. Is that is that right? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Steve Miller, that's a, that's a name that's not brought up enough because he was just opposite of Bosa. And opposite of Bosa is great if you want production, but not great if you want fame. Mm -hmm. uh let's see move on to the next one guys we're gonna we're gonna get on we're gonna get into these positions deep next episode yeah i would love to get into this here 100 um, percent. But, but one thing i do want to mention about incoming player jack sawyer that harrison said from the just the few months here that he's seen sawyer good good news for people listening here so according to Harrison Sawyer is a good worker has a lot, has a lot of skill and he's quick and fluid and will be a good player in the next few years. That's yes. I, I, I think the world of Jack Sawyer already. Yeah. You got an Ohio kid coming to Ohio state at one of a, one of the top recruits from his class there. Man, Period. What's not, not, not what's one of the top not from like, Ohio, not one of the top defensive ends. One of the top recruits, period. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next one. Will Teague be the running back at Ohio State next year? The number one running back. Yeah, I, I will answer this partially. Beginning, the beginning, yes. The, the first few games, yes. Uh, Nomad says no. Man, I think hey, 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 Nomad, hey, hey, Nomad, did you, did you see... Did you see some of those recent pictures from from <laughs> from Teague? Dude, dude looks jacked. Dude, dude looks I would jacked. Want, dude, I would not want to step in a ring with him. <laughs> Day doesn't dude honor looks. seniority. Uh, I don't know that that's true. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't know that that's true, Nomad. Um, maybe look no further than the linebackers. If you want to say day doesn't on your seniority, maybe just look at the linebackers last year and the year before. Uh, Austin, the question was, will Teague be the running back for Ohio State? Yeah, yeah, Michigan Bucknut. Yeah, that, that is one thing that we have criticized and other people too, is the vision. And we've seen a number of times like the hole is right there, but you ran that way. I think <laughs> Teague suffered from the same mental blockage that we saw from oh my goodness kyle i can't yes sure the the previous running back someone no not mike weber the one sermon? what sermon no the previous running back the 20 dobbins, dobbins? thank you jeez why could my i not goodness, think Jared, where have you been i didn't take my adderall today um <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I meant to say that, but it's staying in the podcast. Um, the, the thing is, 
Dobbins, his sophomore year, was trying to get these big gains instead of just getting what was in front of him. And I get that Sermon came on strong last year towards the end of the year. I get that. But. I, God, I want to deep dive this so much. We're running out of time. The. I think we could see a big improvement for Teague this year, maybe not to the same. I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying he's Dobbins. Yeah. I, I, but I, don't, I think yeah, we can again. see, we saw Dobbins make a big improvement from his second year to his third year. I think primarily mentally, primarily about getting the yards in front of him instead of trying to break it open every time. And I, yeah, I think agree. that and, and that's yeah. the same. Yeah. And that's the, that's the one thing that we criticized him. It seems like, almost every game with Teague is he gets hit and for how big he is, like a bruiser running back. He is, he seemed to go down quickly, not getting that extra two yards after contact. Hopefully if if there's one thing that I would really criticize with Teague is getting those extra two yards when you get hit or just bouncing off a Wimpley tackler to, to extend your run there. Cause that's what we saw with Sermon that, in the um, the last few games at Ohio State was him being able to bounce off those tacklers and get those extra yards too. I mean, I mean, heck, he now has the record for most yards in an Ohio State game. By the way, uh, we have uh, Nomad saying read option doesn't work for every running back. Uh, so some talk about read option in the live chat right now. Ohio State, n- none of the quarterbacks on the roster on the team right now were dual threats. They're all pocket passers. Stroud is somewhat mobile, but he, but he's not even Justin Fields. He's certainly not Braxton Miller. Every no, quarterback on the team right now is a pocket passer. Ja- and I don't think any of them are. Yeah, nobody is Braxton. Yes. Uh, I'm just what all I'm saying is, is that. Ohio State, I think, is moving away from the read option. They aren't re- they aren't recruiting quarterbacks who are any way mobile, just in no way mobile. These are these are pocket passers, period. Now, again, that's not to say I, I've seen high school film on all of these guys and all of them can move. I'm not saying any of them are Dan Marino. But, you know. More like Steve Young. <laughs> Can he run? Yeah. Do you want him to? No. And I think that's where Ohio State is with all three of these guys. Yep. All right, Jared. Let's let's wrap up here. Uh, hold um, on, few- Austin. I, I, I'm sorry, but but Austin summed up what I was trying to say perfectly. Uh, you want a pocket passer who can be mobile but isn't inherently mobile, and then he brings up Aaron Rodgers, and yeah. I think that's. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's that, perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, yeah. Rogers, mm-hmm. Wentz. Um, yeah. Yes, the mm-hmm. point the point's been made. We need to move on. All right. Um, two notes here about recruiting here, and then we'll we'll finish up the show here. So tell us a little bit about these two names here, Yevon, on our on our list here, Jared. Yeah, uh, just two quick, two quick uh guys here. Uh, two offensive linemen that Ohio State is in very good standing with released top fives this past week. And Ohio State was present in both of those top fives. Uh, mm-hmm. We have Kenyatta. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Goodwin. And we have Amel, Emil, Emil or Amel. Mm. Anyone in the chat want to help me out here? Emil. Oh, yeah, one of you said the second pronunciation. The other one said the first one. What am I supposed to do? Emil Wagner. We're going with Emil. Someone, someone disagree with me if you don't like Emil and then spell it phonetically in the chat. <laughs> um, Emil Wagner. Uh, he released his top six, actually, not a top five. Uh, he is from Dayton, Ohio, from Wayne or- specifically. And we know who else came from Wayne. Uh, a few, a few Buckeyes recently. Who are you? Yes, Braxton. Braxton came from Wayne. Is that right? Mm-hmm. He did. Okay. 
And I think there's been more recent ones as well. I'm almost uh, almost sure. But we're 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 moving forward. Uh, the you know the crystal ball looks good for both of these guys. Not overwhelmingly good, uh, but with good ones specifically. And he's from Indiana, so Midwest kid, Midwest kid, uh, not an Ohio kid, but Ohio Ohio does well in Indiana. I feel like yeah. if you're incredibly talented and in Indiana, your first looks are always to Notre Dame and Ohio State. That you know that those are going to be your first looks. All right, uh, Austin says just checked. Video for pronunciation, and he's going with Emil. So Emil Wagner. Right. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Emil Wagner. But yeah, uh, Emil Wagner, like I said, is from Dayton. Um, Ohio State, I know he's from Dayton. And so a lot of Ohio fans. Um, no, I didn't say it wrong this time. I'm just saying fans from the state of Ohio. OK, don't don't get on me for saying it like I forgot to say state. OK, don't. I didn't. A lot of people from the state of Ohio. No, I wasn't talking about the Bobcats. Uh, a lot of people from the state of Ohio um, sort of want any top flight kid from the state of Ohio to immediately go to Ohio State. Uh, but do not roll out rule out Notre Dame or Kentucky here. So that would be my my take on Wagner. I like Ohio State. I think Ohio State is the first stop. I think Ohio State is if you got a an honest response from Emil, he'd tell you Ohio State's in first place right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that that's where we're at right now with Emil Wagner. Uh, but do not rule out Kentucky or Notre Dame uh, with Kenyatta Goodwin. Uh, it's it's murder's row. It's it's just some of the best teams. It, I mean. Michigan State's on there, and I, you know, I feel like anytime there's a top five, there's at least one or two schools that just like, which one of these is not like the other, which one of these just doesn't belong. So <laughs> his top five, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, UK, Michigan State. <laughs> huh? I'd almost I'd almost give him a pass if one of them because he's from Indiana. If one of them was like Indiana, Purdue, Notre, Notre Dame. I guess sometimes it's fun just to be a hat on the table. Yep, but I guess. Yeah. But but with as far as Goodwin goes, I like Ohio State here. I don't it's early in the process. I don't love Ohio State here. This is not a done deal, but we do have really highly ranked crystal balls from both Will Fong and Kerlick, both of them giving a crystal ball weight of eight. So that makes you feel real good. Yep. Uh, Will Fong, because he's national and potentially the best crystal baller there is. And Bill Kerlick, because he's very conservative with his crystal balls. So even though he's an Ohio State guy, uh, he's very conservative with his crystal balls. So Feel good about good. Feel good about Goodwin, and feel good about Emil Wagner. But in both cases, not a done deal. Yep. All right. Um, we're going to answer these real quick, Jared, because we are round. over on time. Really quick here, some a few Ask Sloopcast questions. Uh, Nomad here with a weather question: Which smells better, spring rain or the cold of autumn nights? Gonna go with spring rain, but I have to say I, I love the smell of dying leaves, decaying yeah, leaves I'm, on the ground. I'm gonna go with it. the I'm gonna go with the cold of autumn nights just because of my darn allergies that I developed here in North Carolina. So I'm gonna go with the cold of autumn nights. Uh, another question here from uh, yes hashtag Team Scarlet. This is hashtag no Team Gray. Uh, uh, let's see here which week also from Nomad which week of the college football season. Should the first set of rankings be released? I say never. week seven. Never. Week seven. Just never. I week seven. It. I don't need it. Rankings are stupid. The only reason we take them seriously is because they've been around for such a long time. They mean nothing. 
if someone beats a highly ranked team that shouldn't have been highly ranked. So seven, sure. I'll take seven. Oh, he means the college football rankings. Um, once. So when? I don't know. When's the last one? November, or is it like December? Is it the first week of December? Second week of December? Is that when traditionally the college football playoff selection show is? That time. Think, yeah. The one time. Once. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's post Thanksgiving, but then there's also like the conference championship games. So then it's like another week after that. Yeah, so once, only once. I, I, I'm done with rank. It's like, there, you know, people do NFL power rankings, but does anyone care or take them seriously? No. So why do we do it in college football? I, they, they used to matter. Uh, and when I say used to matter, I mean 20 some years ago. Now it's just crap. Yep. And it, I don't need it anymore. I don't need mm -hmm. it anymore. Yeah. All right. Um, question here from Austin Formation. I, I love this question here. I don't know if you, you're prepared to answer this question. Or I don't not, know. I have not looked at it. you. You put these in the notes. I have no idea. All right. I have no idea what you're talking about. Who is the most underappreciated Buckeye of all time? And he says here, as I note, at least mention my boy, Kenny G. Yes. We all love Kenny G. We love We Kenny. all love Kenny G. We all love Kenny G. Don't get me wrong, but most underappreciated of all time? Yeah. And he wasn't even on the field that much. He, he, got, he got us that overtime victory against Purdue. We'll sure. always, always, always remember that. I'm just going to say one big collective answer, the offensive lineman, because outside of like Orlando Pace, who got press, Nick Mangold got some press. And, mm -hmm. But but for the most part, the offensive lineman yeah. set, it's just a, a, a 120 way tie <laughs> between all of Ohio State's offensive linemen, except Orlando Pace. Orlando Pace properly appreciated. But you know, all you, the rest of them. You know, I'm going to say, and I may get a lot of crap for this, but hear me out. A quarterback from the late 2000s. Quarterback from the late 2000s. War number two. Want to say Rose Bowl against Oregon. Oh, yeah. Troll Pryor. That's... I almost wanted to, sometime during the wasteland, someone write this down. Sometime I want to do like a, a troll prior special. I have so many like thoughts. Dude, dude was it? He was a Big Ten freshman of the year when he first came in. Um, but, but, but funny enough, he was never an all Big Ten player at all. Um, he he went three and zero oh against the We're team not up north. We're rounding this right now. He won the Rose Bowl, won the Sugar Bowl. I mean, it would, didn't really count, but in our in our hearts, it counted. Won the, won the Sugar Bowl. Is top five in a lot of categories: passing, touchdowns, yards in a season two, uh, touchdowns in a season as well. Dude was very underappreciated. I know that he, how he exited Ohio State ever is yeah. what. Ohio State fans will always think of. Well, but I think in general, in all I think of, he's one of the most underappreciated for what he did during his tenure at Ohio State. I don't I think that's a great answer. I don't know how a quarterback makes it onto the list, but you're right. I mean, you it may not be the answer, but it's a great answer. And people are mad about tattoo gate. Let's just say that. But a lot of the anger and ire that should have been pointed at Jim Trestle, because but we didn't want to point it at Jim Trestle, because we loved Jim Trestle, and Terrell Pryor was just some quarterback who a lot of people saw as a prima donna, and I'm not saying they're wrong, and a lot of people saw as like an immature, arrogant kid, and again I'm not saying that they're wrong, but because they liked Jim Trestle, and because they didn't like Trell Pryor. 
a lot of the blame and ire and anger that should have been pointed at Jim Tressel got pointed at Trell Pryor instead. And I would love to continue that conversation, but we need to move on. Someone, right, my, someone write that down. My, Wasteland idea, Trell Pryor legacy, something. Last, last question here from Nomad, Jared. Are you Team Thor or Team Star-Lord? Hmm. Well, one guy's a, a literal god. So, god of Thunder. So, yeah, that's that's something. I mean, you can't you can't discount being a literal god. Mm-hmm. The other guy is from Earth. He's a Midwest kid, too, if I remember correctly. Uh, was he not? Was it like I can't remember Indiana, can't remember where Illinois? A- anyone remember? Where where remember. where is Star Lord from? I want to say he's a Midwest kid. Um, Missouri. That's close enough, close to Midwest. <laughs> it's a very southern Midwestern state, but we'll we'll count it. Um, the yeah, the um, so you got to throw some love there because he's he's local. And when we're talking about one person being from Earth and the other person not being, that counts as local. Uh, so you got you got to got to back the hometown, the home planet kid. But Thor is a god. Uh oh, did I lose Kyle? I think I lost Kyle. Guys, we got some technical difficulties. Yeah, we got technical difficulties. Kyle's frozen. Look at that look on his face. Just look at it. Um, I wonder, am, am I down or is he? Is the is the real question I'm dealing with right now? Um, I'm still receiving chats. So if I'm still receiving chats, then that means it's Kyle. So we're just going to let Kyle have that little smirk on his face and I'm going to up. Yep. There, there, there went the zoom feed. We're, we're rolling solo. Hold on guys. We are having. Okay. Oh, and hey, Kyle's back. I just got it set up to the point where I could do the thing without you, and then you came back. Oh, just a trim nomad. I I, I never shave. I never, ever, ever shave. Um, I apologize. I have to yell at my internet provider, whatever happened, but... <laughs> it's all good. I was just talking about my beard. Nomad was making fun of me for playing with my beard, and I was explaining to him that it's my fidget toy. All right. All right, I think that's really need to end the episode. I yep, think it's also what I'm getting to. Uh, yeah, we're we're way over time. Just check out the sleepcast.com. There's links to all of the stuff, including merch stores, including all the other stuff. Um, YouTube, all, all that, all that stuff, all that stuff. It's it's all it's all it at uh, the sleepcast.com. There, that's that's all I felt like doing there. Uh. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Uh, three quick things. Former Buckeye players, Raquan McMillan heading on over to the Patriots. Cameron Johnson signing a three-year deal to Houston. And Curtis Samuel joining McLaurin at the Washington football team. And don't forget about Chase Young now. Yes, and Chase Young. Yes. Well, I was thinking more of the wide receiver and, group, but yes. And Dwayne Haskell. No, Dwayne Haskins is in Pittsburgh now. He is. I'm sure you're happy about. I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a great opportunity for Haskins. Mm-hmm. I think he's at a place. I, I understand that people aren't the biggest fan of the Steelers. Um, he's at a place where he's can. It's 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 a good culture. The the Pittsburgh Steelers are of a really good culture. Um, I think he's away from home. 
which is good for him to get away from certain people. And, you know, he won't be expected to start this year unless something happens to Roethlisberger. And even then, Roethlisberger is, his, his time is, is very much numbered. So is, this could very easily be his last year at, at, in Pittsburgh in the NFL. So Haskins would then have an opportunity. It's a, it's a place where I think they will A, take care of him and B, he'll get an opportunity at a second chance. That's, that's all I got here for today, Jared. Nomad says, Ben is fat and needs to retire. Here's the thing about that. He's always been fat. Like, can we be, he was never trim. It's not like he got old and fat. He just got old. He was, he was never a trim dude. Yes. Agreed. All right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music. If I can scroll up to the, we had a lot of show notes. Holy crap. Uh, tonight's ending music will be by the cloud. Nothings. They are one of my, uh, favorite Ohio bands. Um, like some old royalty here in the state of Ohio. Uh, this is maybe their sixth or seventh album. I'm not sure. It just came out, uh, at the end of February. I'm going to play the song Oslo, which is the first song off of their new album. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Cloud Nothings. Discord and the YouTubes. What is up? Hope everyone enjoyed today's episode. No, no, it wasn't the greatest sports weekend for some of us. Kyle experienced some additional scarlet and gray basketball misery. Yeah, you, you guys made good. it. Was a good. It was a good season. Yeah. It was a good season. Not, I mean, not you always the want that... the you always want the state title for the kids, but yep, yep. Still, well, especially run. the first, especially first, first for the school in that sport. Yeah. Who are the local? Me, I'm the local podcaster. <laughs> Have you guys checked out Ohio versus history? I, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, so I guess not. All right, Jerry, let's go. Let's go ahead and um, hear from our sponsors here. Once again, I'd like to thank the Iron Bean. Oh, nope, did that wrong. I'm going to try it again. Now, when I say I'm going to try it again, that doesn't mean I'm going to edit it out because I'm not. I don't feel like editing. So <laughs> I'm going to try again and you can all just hear me try again because I, I, I've given up on editing. I don't like it and I'm not going to do it anymore. Why? Because I don't get paid enough. That's why. Uh, <laughs> once again, I'd like to thank the Cloud Nothings for entering today's show. And I once again would like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's show. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, I've talked a lot about who they are, talked some of it about what you can do uh, with some of their spices. Let me let me grab some of the other spices I haven't talked about yet this episode. The Brits blend is an amazing Southwest blend. I put it in my salsa. I put it in my chili. You can take like some cheap store bought salsa. You guys. This is now just about the Brits blend. I'm, I'm abandoning my plan. This is now just about the Brits blend. We're talking about Brits blend right now. First off, just get your, your chili isn't that good. I'm talking to a lot of you right now. You think your chili is great. It's not. I'm, I'm just pointing it out. It's not as good as you think it is. If you want it to be better, get some Brits blend. Now, I can also tell you about the Brits blend that you can take like some, like, you know, you go to Kroger and you get like the big, I don't know, it's like a half gallon, maybe 64, I, I don't know. 64 ounces, a half gallon, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, you just get that big, cheap thing of Kroger salsa. Get that. Go to the produce section. Get yourself some fresh cilantro. And of course, already sitting at home is your bottle of the Brits blend. Take that cilantro, mix it in there, chop it up, mix it in there. Take the Brits blend. It's already chopped up for you. It's amazing. Sprinkle that in there. Mix that up. If you want your salsa to have a little bit more volume, 
I like to add a, I like to add black beans. That that way you're not just like shoving your face with basically just chips. You're getting some actual health, some actual substance in there. But it, maybe it's black beans, maybe it's pinto beans, maybe it's kidney, whatever you're into. I I don't care. Put some put some actual substance in there. Put some beans in there, put something in there. Mix all that in, let it sit preferably overnight. Now I'm not saying you have to, but I am saying it's going to be better that way. Let it sit, let everything sort of congeal and get together. And that's going to be the, be the best salsa you've ever had in your life with little effort. Now, if you, if you did all the stuff fresh, it's, it's obviously going to be better, but if we're talking about a little, just a little bit of effort, we're talking about still just putting in a little bit of effort for salsa. Cheap Kroger salsa, some Brits blend, some fresh cilantro. You've just got yourself some amazing salsa. And if you need it to be a little bit spicier, go ahead and throw some Four Horsemen in there as well. Or Discord. Depends upon if you like, like any sort of sweetness in your salsa. I personally would go with the Four Horsemen, but you could go Discord. And uh, you, you can do that and a lot of other things with some of the Mad Canadian spices over at the madcanadianbbq.com. Uh, use promo code SLOOPCAST10, that's SLOOPCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The start of the show, I told you who they are. The middle of the show, I shared with you some of the dark roasts. And now I'm going to share some of the medium roast that is over at ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, let's see, some of the medium roasts here. Uh, the first one I have here is the Ride or Die. It says here, the Ride or Die was originally a biker term, meaning if you couldn't ride, you'd rather die. It has now changed to mean anyone that you will ride and, and ride any problems out with them or die trying. Um, says here that it's an American, it's a classic American breakfast cup, superb with drip brewed and, and enjoyed black and roasted in turn with cocoa nibs, the Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean with superb smoothness and flavor. Um, you'll find caramel, hazelnut and sweet cream in it as well. Delicious. Uh, another one here is the Rocco. It's an Ethiopian natural process medium roast. Uh, he says here, it's the mother of all coffee. Uh, something pretty special and unique about this youth Ethiopian natural when it's at its best. And they are excited to introduce this to everybody. Um, says here that it has um, includes some tropical fruits, blueberry, watermelon, and jasmine. It's displaying a rich acidity and silky mouth feel. This coffee is pleasure is pleasuringly exotic. And the third one, which we've heard a number of times on this show, um, thanks to the Mad Canadian, is the Iron Coffee. Um, they said that this is one of their best ones. It's very Cast smooth, rich, and clean. It's fuller bodied and lower acidity. The main, t to the main tone is going to be a deep, semi-sweet chocolate smoke note balanced with a just a hint of flora aspect one of one of the best selling on their site currently check out those and much much more again over at ironbeancoffee.com again that's ironbeancoffee.com where they are america's local coffee roaster hey everyone make sure to check out uh sub subscribe to both us and the buckeye scoop uh pod uh oh boy I haven't said this part in a while. Make sure to subscribe both to us and the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channels. Uh, just get those subscription numbers up for us. We would appreciate it. Um, if you watch us on one, please make sure to subscribe on the other. We uh, would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.